by now you all know the stocking on my 375 gallon aquarium. If not, you might want to catch up on the last couple of videos I made leading up to this one. For now, I will quickly recap. I planned on moving my Asian arowana from his 370 gallon plywood aquarium to the 375 gallon acrylic aquarium that I just built. To fast forward a bit, that 370 gallon aquarium is now a goldfish aquarium and I'm loving it. Now back to the 375. I wanted to get him some new tank mates to go with him in his new home. To bring you up to speed as to why I chose these tank mates, I'll replay this clip from the original video. Before I show you what I got, it's more important to talk about why I got it. Now this guy has had tank mates in the past, but the bigger he gets, the more aggressive he's gotten. He won't allow anything to go in any tank with him. However, you guys know that I've recently built the 375 gallon system and he's being moved over into it. I'm hoping that the move and the change will be enough to kind of mix things up for him and accept new tank mates. It's not going to be that simple though. First and foremost, I've had this guy for a few years and we've been through a lot together. I actually like him a lot. Plus he's an Asian arowana, which means he's a really expensive fish. So obviously I can't have tank mates that are going to attack him or potentially put him at risk. So what can I have? Well, I do want tank mates for this tank, but I'm not going to have tank mates just to have them. I actually have to like them as well. The second thing I'm looking for is they have to be able to take a beating and bounce right back. Because I fear that when they're first added together, the arowana will go after them. And while I don't think he's going to continuously pummel them, I think that the first few days will be his most aggressive time. So I need a fish that can take the abuse, but then go right back to normal. I also need a fish that's an aggressive eater and will eat almost anything. This is the most important. They're going to be going into a tank with a big fish that's a big eater. They need to be equally aggressive when it comes to feeding, if not more aggressive. I'm even more so looking for an omnivore, hoping that they'll eat almost anything that I offer. Now, because the arowana might potentially be aggressive for the first few days, I need a fish that will school to help diffuse that aggression so that it's not easy to single one out. I also need a fish that actually gets pretty big. Anything that it can fit in his mouth, he's going to eat. Now, because I need something big and he's already 22 inches, I need to be able to buy them big. I also want something that's active and actually adds to the tank. Looking for a fish that would hopefully swim throughout the entire column of the tank. So now you can see why he's always had no tank mates. At a smaller size, he had discus and stingrays in with him, but the bigger he grew, the less tolerant he became. And it's truly narrowed it down to what I can keep with him. With all of that said, I did find something. So what did I get? So obviously I got Red Hook Silver Dollars. They matched up with everything I needed out of them and were available at the time. But what has happened since then? Well, let's start from the beginning. I added them to the 375 gallon first. This would allow me to keep the tank running and quarantine them in this tank for at least a month, as all fish should. Upon arrival, they were slightly emaciated. Luckily, they accepted food right away, and because of this, I was able to directly medicate their food and treat for internal parasites, which a lot of times wild-caught fish simply carry with them. Luckily, these guys didn't have any, but boy did they like to eat. During this month, they put on a lot of weight and fins healed completely. With them in great shape, settled into their new tank, and eating aggressively, I decided it was time to move the arowana in. Now since the water in both tanks matched identically, all I had to do was scoop the arowana out of one tank and into the other. Once added to the tank, the red hook stayed away from the arowana as he got used to his new aquarium. On the second day, the arowana chased the red hooks from time to time but never actually got any. I don't think that was his real intentions anyway. He just wanted to make sure they knew he was boss. During feeding, the red hooks would eat, but the arowana did not which is normal, he takes a little longer to settle in, usually a week or so. On the third day, I noticed the arowana's dorsal fin was ripped, and his tail looked like it might have been nipped on. Since I never actually saw it happen, that might have been caused by the arowana himself, probably from jumping and thrashing at the red hooks, I wasn't sure. It was minor damage though, and would heal naturally in time. Over the next week, I continued feeding and doing larger water changes. Due to the higher bio load in the tank at this point, I wanted to give the bacteria in the filter a chance to catch up. By the end of the week, the arowana was still not eating, even after being offered his favorite foods. He was more concerned with the red hooks. I tried a few different things in the tank, starting with flow. I increased the flow in the tank, and this helped a lot. 
Mayarwana loves to swim in the current at times, and this kept him preoccupied while adding a new dynamic to the tank, which kind of threw all the fish off for a short while. I also changed the lighting and this helped a bit as well. Seemingly, all fighting stopped. Now it was time to get him eating again. With him, a bump in temperature and some live worms always works. But guess who else likes worms? The red hooks. Probably more so than the arowana. The problem with the red hooks is that they are an aggressive eater, generally attacking food as it hits the surface. The arowana, though, likes to take his time. Now typically this would work, but with the red hooks and the arowana, it's not a really good combination. So I resorted to feeding him with tongs. Even then, he rarely accepted it. To make matters worse, the red hooks would gang up and all come after the food at once. Eventually, the arowana got hungry enough to start eating. Until one night, while feeding him, one of the red hooks mistook one of his barbells for a worm and bit it in half. If you're not familiar with an arowana's barbells, in the wild they use them to feel the surface of the water, basically skimming it and waiting for any movement, which would tell them that something dropped into the water. So it goes without saying that there are a ton of nerve endings in the barbells. Once bit, the arowana jumped into flight mode lashing around the tank and completely freaking out. So now to make matters worse, not only would the red hooks eat everything that was added to the tank before the arowana had a chance to get any, he now associated me with danger. I should back up a bit and explain what goes on during feeding. When food is added, the red hooks go crazy for it. This excites the arowana, and instead of eating, he chases the red hooks, who slip out of the way and go back to eating. Now the red hooks will eat until they can no longer fit anything else in their bellies. So they will literally pick food up and carry it around like little chipmunks until they can. By the time feeding is done, the arowana has no interest in eating anymore and the water is polluted by the sheer amount of food I have to feed to keep these guys happy. I've tried feeding them up to 8 meals a day, or feeding them several massive meals a day. The arowana will still not eat. With this incredible amount of food being offered, I installed the drip system changing out 100 gallons a day, and still did water changes every second day of 50%. This tank became a full-time job. Obviously, the red hooks do not need anything close to the amount of food I was offering, but it was the only way to get the arowana some food. But because of this, the tank was slowly getting out of hand. While I could stay on top of water quality, if I skipped a day, things would go downhill fast. Two months into this, the arowana has lost a lot of weight. He is now getting weaker and the tables are turning. The red hooks started to pester him and beat him up at night. At this point, it seems like there is no real light at the end of this tunnel. The red hooks were barely half grown. So I pictured what things were like now and what they would be like in a few short months when these guys grow to massive proportions. Enough was enough. I had to make a choice, the red hooks or the arowana. Obviously, you guys know which way I would go, but to put this into perspective, I have a bunch of $35 fish beating up a $2,000 fish. Not that value of a fish is what is most important to me, but it's not something that is easy to watch happen without considering it. Obviously, the arowana is my favorite fish as well and has been with me for a few years, and is even arguably the mascot of my channel if I were to have one. But what to do with the red hooks? They need a massive tank. I didn't have an extra one. I don't have room for another one and I certainly can't afford to just build big tanks as I please. I could divide the tank they are in in two, but how long would I have to do that and would it actually work in the long term? Even if I divided the tank, it also wouldn't be big enough on either side for these fish. Not to mention would completely ruin the look of the aquarium. Decorations like wood and some fake plants do nothing for them. Since none of the fish in this tank actively hide or need anything for comfort in the tank, the wood I did try just served to be a point of injury for all fish. When the arowana would start chasing the red hooks, they would dash about the tank and slam into the wood making matters worse. After the arowana lost a couple scales on the first day from it, I removed it. Now you're reminded again why I don't do decorations with my arowana. Luckily, I show people how to build a lot of things for their aquariums on this channel. Even the aquariums themselves. Now back when I consulted a bit, I had a client that built a huge tank. We became good friends and talk on a weekly basis since. During the entire process of this situation I'm in now, he knew what was going on and ensured me that he would take the red hooks if there was no other option or if things didn't improve. 
so I took him up on that offer and shipped them out to him earlier in the week. They're now happily settled into his 400 gallon aquarium. Perhaps someday I can convince him to send me a video or some pictures for an update, and if he does I'll post them on my Facebook page. Unfortunately, not everyone wants to be in the limelight though and I respect his wishes to remain private. So now the arowana has the tank to himself. For now. But we'll come back to that in a minute. Some of you might have your own thoughts or questions on this situation and I would be happy to hear them in the comments below. I'm sure I missed something in this video and don't mind clarifying them in the comments. With that said, I should add that while I feel like I made a big mistake here, this should have worked out. Red hooks or other large silver dollar species are classic tank mates for arowana, easily in the top 10. Rarely does this not work out. Once again, this just shows that Every arowana has its own personality. I guess I picked a fish that met my specific needs that were simply available at the time I started looking. Instead of simply being patient and getting what I'm really after, I jumped at the chance to get them. As a fish keeper, I think you can all relate to getting excited about the possibility of getting a new fish. I am not exempt from that. It sure was an awesome sight to see though, wasn't it? Now it's only been a couple days, but the arowana is visibly happier. More active and begging to eat again. It won't be long until he's back to his normal self, although I think it's going to take time for him to forgive me. And don't worry, that barbell will grow back with time. Now, what will I do for tank mates at this point? I want you to think about this. Maybe all this not working out happened for a reason. Maybe I could have gotten it to work or tried harder to make it work, but subconsciously didn't want it to. I guess this is going to have to end with me simply stating... I think it's time to get back into some rays.